What is up everybody, it's your boy Duty back again with another video and my full apology for yesterday. Your boy Duty was a little busy and didn't have much time to clip our boy Phil. Uh, I think I got one video out that I posted, but to be honest, uh, it was pretty, pretty dull and uneventful. The only thing that came out of yesterday's stream was that the dense streak is dead again. That's right. The dense streak died at one. Our boy Phil is just struggling to keep any attention or any support on his streams and uh i don't know what he's gonna do now i do have one suggestion for him that he might want to uh take on if he wants to continue with this dent streak nonsense so uh let's see what phil had to say on the daily wrap good evening everyone phil here and welcome to the daily wrap for what was my return day of the week thursday the 3rd of october 2024 uh an interesting streaming day because today i only had one game on the agenda and that was dead rising deluxe remastered and it was uh, an interesting, you know, experience with it. We had highs and lows today, which I'll talk about. Uh, but let's start talking about the podcast, which is what, uh, you know, began our day. The podcast was a pretty chunky one because I talked about a bunch of stuff that my wife and I did on our day off. A bunch of gaming news, including story. Right, I'm going to stop it right here, but he does not see, he does not see how that sounds a little wrong when he says a chunky one and then mentions his wife in the same sentence. Come on, Phil, you could do better than that. You, you, you don't need to give us memes, Phil. All right, let's keep going. Stories about The Sims 4, Silent Hill 2 Remake, Metaphor, and more. Plus an update on some nonsense with COG and other stuff going on. So it was a pretty chunky, lengthy show. I have done three different clips for you. One on the Metaphor situation on if I should play it. One on the COG situation and one on The Sims 4. Hope you'll enjoy those overnight as they go live on the channel if you haven't already watched the entirety of the podcast. Um, Then... All right, I want to clip it. Well, I want to stop it there because I do want to talk about the clips. Um, his clips are doing pretty bad. I mean, even your, even Duty, even him talking about Duty, he could barely muster like three or four hundred views on that video. Phil, what, dude? You you don't make it any interesting. You don't add any effects to it. You don't do anything. You essentially just clip your video and just post it. I mean. Do something money funny. Put some sound effects. Do I don't know. Create something. Just simply cutting the clip from your video is pretty boring. I mean, even when people do shorts, they don't even do that. When people clip their uh, their streams and create shorts, they modify it a bit. They make it a little bit more interesting. They add a couple little things here and there, and they make it a little bit more funnier than just your normal stream clip. And uh, that's probably why you're struggling. Because let's be honest, Phil. Other than uh, your hardcore dents, which are what, maybe 100, 150 people, those are the only people watching your videos, these clips in your videos. The people on your stream, the two to 300 people watching your streams, they're not going to rewatch your streams again, except for those hardcore dents. But I'm just talking about the casual people that pop on your stream, watch it, and then once it's done, they can just care and they move on to whatever else they're doing in their life um so you got to offer something a little different phil for example i'll give you an example I, I did a video the other day where i did a comparison of my video to compare to your video and i talked about how you know even when i'm clipping your content i still get 10 20 fold you know more views 20 times more views than you do and why i mean it's kind of the same content right but I zhuzh it up. I make it a little bit interesting. I make it funny. I add some funny memes to it. Uh, the template's a little different. I add something to it to make it, a, uh, in, in, in the words of, you know, uh, the courts. I make it transformative, Phil. And people come and watch it. And of course, they're going to watch the, the clips that, that mock you and make you look dumb. Uh, for example, right here where you actually said chunky and then you mentioned your wife, which, come on, brother. You, you got to be you got to be more aware of your surroundings. You got to be more aware of what you're actually saying, Phil. You just can't say Chunky and then my wife. This reminds me of the time when she came on stream on the Dundoko Island stream or whatever stream it was. Uh, no, it wasn't Dundoko. It was, the, it was her first stream back in five years. And you said, here's my wife. And everyone saw how robust she was. And then you came out of nowhere and just said, by the way, we're not. she's not pregnant. I mean, come on, Phil. We we understand what you were trying to say. Some people understand what you were trying to say was, um, no, this isn't a pregnancy announcement. Whether she was fat or skinny, you, you just, you know, she's not being on stream to make a big announcement. She was just being on stream. But come on, bro. 
This was her first time back in five years. We haven't seen her. She was missing in action. We had a whole hashtag, where is Cat? And she finally comes on and, you know, she's a bit robust. And you come out, I don't know where, in your stupidity and says, oh, by the way, she's not pregnant, folks. She's just bigly. That's all she is. She's just bigly. <sighs> anyway, let's keep going. On the first stream, we jumped into Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster on the PC, immediately having technical issues. Audio was popping in and out, having issues in the opening cutscenes and, and uh, problems there with the story elements. Then the frame rate had completely tanked when I finally got to control Frank for the first time. So tons of problems right from the get-go. After tweaking it to turn off this really weird input delay feature and changing the audio from uh, home theater to TV, it seemed to fix the issues. And then the game ran smoothly pretty much for the rest of the day, except for one game crash that happened during a boss fight. But lucky for me, because of the improvements of the game, it didn't really affect stuff. So in a nutshell, what are the improvements to the game? The graphics are significantly improved. The character models, I mean, are completely redone. Particularly the psychopaths stand out more interestingly now with their crazy exaggerated faces and the like. It just looks way more realistic and fun while the original game was very cartoony and weird. Um, the survivors, they actually are not brain dead stupid anymore, although they're not all smart and some of them are dumb and will still get themselves killed, which happened to me tonight. Uh, for the most part, if you just keep yelling, follow me, they will fight their way through the zombies and follow you to the safe room. So that's obviously a big asset. Um, controls, they have been improved for the most part. Now, Frank moves more like a modern game and the gunplay particularly is the most improved thing. Previously, to try to shoot anyone with a gun in this game was a huge chore. Now, it very much plays almost identically to other third-person shooters, with the uh, only difference being zooming in and out with like, the sniper is still like the D-pad. But outside of that, <clears throat> it's actually quick and fast to aim and fire when previously it took so long, and it makes significantly... It makes certain parts of the game way easier, okay? Um, and I think the most improved part of the game, checkpoints. Previously with Dead Rising 1, major issue was if you die during a fight, if a survivor idiotically gets eaten or killed, and if something ends, you have to start from your last save file without exception, right? Like, there's just no exceptions to that. You must go back to a save. And a lot of the times in the game, you just can't get to a save room quickly. You're doing a big leg of stuff. And the next thing you know, you have to replay a significant amount of gameplay. And I remember this very, very much frustrating me in my original run eight years ago. Now that's been uh, repaired and fixed. Now you could just resume from a quick save, uh, save point. For example, a couple of times has helped me today. One time I had a bunch of survivors with me, but the only way to get across the mall was to go through the open central courtyard and the prisoner psychopaths were there in my face immediately attacking me and then as they did zombies just ganged up on me and immediately insta killed me so i actually legit had no opportunity to do anything but die and it's like wow that's pretty bad that the game really wasn't fair in that regard um well now you get a checkpoint so yeah they got the job on me the first time the second time i knew where they were coming i tried to run out of the way and actually was able to fight them off so it made uh it significantly improved that experience now another time i was fighting a psychopath inside the grocery store and you know not any fault of mine the game crashed the game crashes, I'm like, now, if this didn't have a checkpoint, I would have to go back to a save and probably do a significant amount of gameplay over. Instead, when I booted the game back up, we start right at the entrance of the door that leads to the boss fight because of the checkpoint system. I was like, so to give you some perspective here, four and a half hours of gameplay of Dead Rising to Luxury Master today. I am just under halfway through the game. We're in the middle of day two. I'm level like 22. I have all these abilities unlocked. Um, we're basically at the point of the game where all the, all the cultists start showing up in the mall now. Um, which makes it harder, and obviously, you know, the amount of bodies and everything is pretty insane. But yeah, like the, like now, it's just so much easier to play. And without having to redo all that gameplay because of trial and error and saving, um, I think it significantly cut hours and hours off my playthrough. Like the original run, I remember having problems with two or three particular things early on. That this time around, I just beat right away, no problem. So that's obviously a huge help, right? That now the controls are better, the graphics are better, the response is better, Frank is moving better, uh, the survivors aren't dunces, checkpoints, just makes it a better game. So. I'm having a great time with it. And the audience today seemed to be in line with me. I had good attendance on my streams all day. The first stream, we did not hit the support goal, but we still got a good level of support that I was happy with. The second stream, we did hit the support goal because someone came by and gave me a significantly large tip, which I really appreciated. So yeah, it was a great day. I'm really enjoying the game. We continue to play through this coming Saturday. Okay? Um... Alrighty, so... <laughs> so, uh... Okay, so Phil ran down the game and the upgrades and so on. And what does he decide to spend most of his time on? He wanted to dedicate how happy he was that the game is so much easier. Yep, there you go, Phil. Non-try-hard Phil. I mean, a anything but make a game difficult. And that's, what's, that, that's exactly what people talk about, Phil. When they do this is how you don't play and they say you're a bad gamer. This is the type of shit... That people mention because any m minor adversity or anything that that takes some thought or takes planning in a video game you despise 
and you sit there and you bitch and complain and you moan about how the developers screwed up and the pacing's all wrong and uh it's just added filler it, it, it just nonsense you're just not a good gamer dead rising one two three and four were probably some of the easiest games to play phil and the way you're playing it is even easier i saw some of your content and you're simply just running through running away from everything how boring is that dude how fucking boring is that who wants to watch you fucking walk through a game like that but of course walking simulators are your jam and you love it because it doesn't take a lot of fucking effort just like jrpgs jrpgs is jrpgs is essentially a lot of reading uh it's like watching a fucking uh novella it's like watching a fucking soap opera and very minimal action and if you do have action it's simply pressing one button it's not very complex and that's why phil loves those fucking games and 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 to him to hear him praise dead rising one that it's easier what's the fucking point of playing the game if it's easier like i enjoyed dead rising one because it was like you know it was kind of a sandbox game you went in there you played you you had to try different things different tactics and yeah you died a lot but who cares like what's the fucking point he's so happy that they now have checkpoints do you hear this guy why even bother playing the fucking game, Phil? Just stick to Mario Brothers or, or or something easy, something, you know, monkey ball, something something fitting uh, your skill level, brother, because, uh, you know, hard games is just not it. And I found it just so funny. The other thing is support, of course, yes, the Den Streak died. Our boy Phil didn't hit it. Uh, it, it died at one. <laughs> and then uh, last night was even fun because last night he played it and the dude didn't get any fucking support. Yeah, like $16 total super chats and tips uh, all the way up to about an hour and a half. And then some some anonymous person came in and dropped a $200 tip, which was so fucking fake. You could tell that that was just so fake. It was so fake or it's obvious a, a, um, uh, a chargeback because and, and you can hear it in his voice when he saw the name and he saw the amount he even knew it himself he was like yeah this is a chargeback so he didn't even get excited he just went through the fucking motions the one thing i noticed is that he's not recording the dent streak anymore like i didn't see it on his stream yesterday uh i'm curious to see it if we'll see it today if if he'll actually pop it up and say you know dent streak one or whatever it is which it'll probably fucking die yet again uh what's he playing today uh meta 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 four or whatever and then street fighter at night or whatever yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure the funding goals uh will not get hit on either stream uh so yeah let's let's keep going god so great day today really great return day really dead rising all day got us into the spooky vibe of the, the halloween horror season and uh you know can't wait for more so speaking of more what's next well tomorrow we'll have a jill level one podcast in the morning and then we're going to return back to the metaphor ray fantasio demo um, we are in the one major optional dungeon available in the demo right now. Well, I don't understand it's difficult, but if you get through it, you level up a lot, you get good items and stuff. So it's kind of significantly worth it to do it. Um, so I can't wait to do more of that tomorrow because, uh, I, I'm in the midst of it and it's fun. It's turn-based combat, excellent stuff going on. So I can't wait for that. Um, will we have a lot of attendance and support? Probably not. It seems like this game sadly is not going to get it. You'll see in the clip that I made it for my podcast today that I kind of expressed my, my sadness and disappointment that in modern times, I can't seem to get an audience to like JRPGs. It doesn't really matter which one it even is. You just don't really come out to major support with them. It's sad because I love them. But I am going to finish up this demo. So that's the daytime stream tomorrow. The night is Friday Night Fights. On Friday night, 6.45 p.m. Pacific time, it's the return of the Marvel vs. Capcom collection. So prepare for Marvel vs. Capcom 1, X-Men vs. Street Fighter, maybe some Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter for the first time besides that one time that I randomly played it. And uh, all right, I'm throwing in the towel. I can't, I can't anymore. <laughs> I can't. I'm throwing in the towel. Uh, anyway, yeah, th that's really it. I doubt he's gonna hit the uh, dent streak again today, and uh, I think that I think it might be the end of it. I think the dent streak is dead. I think Phil is finally realizing that he looks very stupid having to restart a dent streak over and over again, and getting lucky if he has one or two streams where he actually hits the goal. So I think I think well, he, he'll still do the whole king's coffer nonsense um he'll keep that up uh the next thing he might do is i thought he was going to count memberships to the t to the total of the tip goal i don't think he's going to do that this is what i think he might do he might do a daily king's coffer goal so if he hits 300 dollars in funding for the day so let's say in the first stream he makes 50 bucks but then on the night stream he makes 250 dollars right 
that for a total of 300. He'll then say that he hit the daily King Street goal and counted as as two. He he may be that desperate and go go that route. He might go that route. We already know how desperate he is to try to stick it to the trolls and continue this nonsense of the dent streak by lowering the goal to, from 200 to 150. He's not going to lower it to 100. There's no way he is uh, because his, his support will tank. I mean, his support tanking now. I mean, tips are basically abysmal and he's really just getting super chats. And I think that goes to the fact that people don't like tipping Phil because they know he gets their information. So they rather just do a super chat and a super chat is a lot easier to do it's on it's on your youtube account you don't have to go to a separate screen you basically just hit super chat drop a super chat and just move on with your day uh so yeah so look out for that look out that that phil might start combining the stream goals and claiming that if he hits 300 for the day then the the den streak was 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 surpassed he might go that route we'll see anyway that's all folks uh don't forget i'm streaming today at 11 o'clock we're gonna stream for about an hour and a half two hours We'll we'll get we'll delve a little bit into some uh, Phil, uh, some locale live, and uh, maybe Cyrax. Uh, the Cyrax friends have been pretty quiet, but we'll talk a little bit about Cyrax as well. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace out.